Hello and welcome. My name is Mark Lassoff. We've got another great project for you today. We're gonna be building an iOS app, but we're gonna be building it with HTML5, CSS, and Android. If you're enjoying these project videos, please go ahead and like, subscribe, and comment on the video. It really does help us out. Thanks so much. Let's get started. All right, so here I'm in my command line and I'm in the folder that has my actual application. I'm using the Cordova library and I'm gonna simply choose Cordova run iOS to run this application. That's gonna build the application using the Cordova set of tools, which essentially packages all of the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and packages it is either an iOS or an Android app. I can build either. So right now it's packaging the app and it's gonna run it in the iOS simulator right here on my machine. All right, let's bring up our iOS simulator. There it is, and you can see our application. It's a simple dice roll application that rolls five dice like in Yahtzee. Every time I click roll dice, it rolls the dice again and plays the noise. Now we built this using the Cordova library. The Cordova library is free and from Apache. It is very well documented and easy to get started with. You'll start by downloading a set of tools. Now I gotta tell you the download process and installing the tools is not always smooth. Sometimes you'll have some trouble with it. Once you've followed the instructions and installed Cordova, let me show you a quick command line trick that'll help. If you go here into the command line and you type Cordova, it's gonna show you all of the commands. And the command that you should run is Cordova requirements and then iOS or Android. So if I run C Cordova requirements iOS, it's gonna show me that I have all of the iOS requirements installed. I have the right operating system, I have Cordova installed, and then I need the actual iOS set of tools. Now, by the way, you can't create iOS applications unless you're on a Mac. Sorry, that's Apple licensing for you. Android applications can be created on a Mac or a Windows device. Okay, so you can see I've got these installed, but now if I went ahead and do, did Cordova requirements Android, I don't have actually all the Android tools installed, and it's gonna tell me exactly what I am missing. I've got my Android JDK installed, Android SDK, the Android target, meaning what we're actually, uh, the version we're targeting is not installed. Gradle, which is a build tool, is not installed. So I'd have to go back and make these installations before we could build for Android. But because we have everything we need for iOS, we're ready to go. And there's just a few commands here. When we create a new Cordova app, it's just Cordova, create, then you need to give it the name of the app, and we'll just say, hello world, then you need to give it a URL, actually a reverse URL. So do your URL in reverse, TV, framework, and then the name of the app, hello world. And then again, the, the folder you wanna put it in will say hello world. That would actually build the app and build out everything that's inside it. Since I've already done the build, we don't need to go through that process. But if we take a look at what we have in here, we have a number of folders that are useful to us that were built by the Cordova tool. There's a config, which is actually going to be your configuration for when you're going to uh, complete your application. It has links to all sorts of things that are necessary, like your graphic icons and things like that. Since we're not deploying, we don't need that right now. We can get out of that. But we also have here a platforms folder and that's gonna have your Android and iOS deployments in it. If we look inside of iOS, this is a normal Xcode project. I actually could load the Xcode project file right into my version of Xcode. And the Android folder, if we had the Android tools installed, would have all of the Android requirements, which is an actual Java application. Now the most important folder in here is the www folder. 
And essentially in the www folder, we're going to have a standard web application. How Cordova works is it actually projects a web browser surface that the user doesn't know is there. And then it processes the HTML, JavaScript, and CSS just like a web browser would. So you can use almost any library or any content that you would normally use with a website, but you're building an actual mobile app. So if you look inside the folder, I have a folder for audio, a folder for CSS, a folder for my images, an index.html, and a JavaScript folder. Like I said, a pretty standard way to arrange a web application, all in the www folder. So let's take a closer look at the code that makes up the actual application. And for that, we'll go into Atom, which is my tool for text editing. There we go. We're in Atom. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put that folder that's got all of our content in here, that www folder. So let's reopen, uh, let's yeah, add project folder. And let's navigate to where we want to be. So that's going to be inside of my documents folder, inside of code. And then I've got my Cordova Yahtzee roller, rolls five dice like Yahtzee. And then here in www is everything I need. So we'll open that. And now I've got all of my necessary files. Let's take a first look at the index.html. I'll make that much bigger. Now, all of these comments that you see here and licensing information, etc., that's all produced when the Cordova tool creates this template. You can just pretty much ignore it. I just leave it in there. Um, you can read it if you're interested. So this is the Cordova template. It creates some meta tags that help this uh, project correctly as a mobile app inside of the Cordova package. We set the viewport by setting the initial scale to one, meaning 100%. The width to device width, right? The width of the application is going to be the width of the device screen. And then we've got the viewport fit equals cover. So we're going to cover the entire viewport. You keep hearing this term viewport. That just means the screen of the device. We link to jQuery mobile. Now this is code I put in. I use the jQuery mobile library because it's got a great set of tools for mobile applications. If you're not familiar with the jQuery mobile library, you can also just find that easily on the web. It's an extremely popular mobile library. Just search for jQuery mobile. It's an offshoot of jQuery. Gives you all of the advantages of jQuery, but it's specially built for mobile. So if we were to take a look, for example, at uh, the documentation, we've got events, icons, methods, all of which are very well documented here by version of jQuery. If we go to the demos, we can see demos of a lot of the components that are available. So for example, there's a date picker widget and it'll give us a sample of that. And then the source code we would use with the jQuery libraries in order to activate this particular widget. Here's the slider widget. Now what I particularly like about jQuery mobile is the page metaphor. If you've ever developed a mobile app and it's too close to the sides of the screen or it's difficult to actually in JavaScript and HTML to switch states or switch screens, this is what the page metaphor in jQuery solves. So if we uh, keep moving down, we got our jQuery, we've got my style sheet and our title, you can immediately see inside the body this data role equals page. So this logical division is actually becomes our container for the entire app. The container contains all of the content inside the app. I think I need a close div right there. So the container actually contains all of the content inside the app. So we want to mark off using jQuery mobile here, data role equals page, so it knows what that is. And then we have a header section, which is div with a data role header. And then we have our H1 and div. The header, like many mobile applications, appears at the very, very top. Now, because we've got kind of the clock here, the header isn't showing 
Um, but let's go ahead and rotate the device and see if it shows. Hardware, rotate left. And now you can see the header right there. Yahtzee dice roller. And that's created by, if we can move this guy, doesn't seem to want to move. There we go. That's created by this code right here on 43, 44, and 45, data roll header Yahtzee dice roller. I didn't style this. This is styled by jQuery Mobile to look like a mobile app. All right, so after the header, we have our main section. That gets the role main and the class UI content. All that again from jQuery. I divided the main section into two smaller divs, one called role and the other called dice. In role, we have our button. And if you want to take another look at the button, I'll pull that up. The button is optimized for mobile, goes all the way across. It's nice and thick, so someone with fat fingers can easily touch it. That's button class UI button, which gives us that uh, look from jQuery mobile. The ID, which I gave it to hook it up to the JavaScript. And then the words roll dice that are inside. Then we have the dice div itself, and that's where the dice appear. So they're in a separate div called dice. So you can see that right below our button in its own div. And then I have the footer. That also gets the data roll footer. And then I have the content in there, which is just copyright 2019 framework. And that's pretty much our whole user interface. Very, very simple user interface for a very, very simple app. You can see we've got the header, the content section with the button and our dice, and then we've got the footer. I'll go ahead and rotate this back so it takes less room. Here, we'll rotate that to the right. And there we go, perfect. So we've got our dice and our roll dice button. Now, below the actual user interface, I have my audio tag. I've given that the ID SFX, and I've included in here a wave file called roll.wave, which is in my audio folder, roll.wave. And that's just the sound, can't really display that. That's just the sound that plays each time we roll the dice. And I don't have any visualization of that. I don't have the controls attribute here. If you want to show the actual player, you need to use the controls equals controls attribute and value pair. I don't have that, so it just is invisible, but it is part of the DOM. So audio tag, and then we're attaching to the JavaScript, which makes things happen. So the JavaScript is in the JS folder. We can take a quick look at the JavaScript here. Again, when I created this, the template created these comments. I created a constant number rolls five for the number of dice, so we could easily change that if we wanted to. And then there's some content in here that's part of the template. And really what the template deals with is waiting for the entire device to be ready before it starts drawing things on screen. It's very possible to create a race condition where you're trying to address elements in JavaScript before they're drawn on the screen, which would cause an error. So there's a device ready event, which is only available in a device running a Cordova app that tells you when the device is ready. So there's some content in there that essentially waits for the device to be ready before it starts running the app. And you can see here, we've got an initialize function listening for the device ready event. And then we have on the device ready, we'll receive the device ready event. And essentially what happens here is once the device ready event occurs, then we're going to update the document object model, update the DOM. And where we start our app is with app init. That's a function I added in there. So I know everything is ready. And then we're going to run our app init function for our app. Our app is only a few dozen lines here. It's fairly short. The first thing we do when we initialize the app is we're going to get document get element by ID BTN role. Now, if you don't remember, if we look at the HTML, BTN role is our button, right? There's the ID BTN role. So I'm referring to that in the JavaScript. 
I'm adding an event listener, listening for a click event, which on a mobile device essentially is a touch event. And then we're running the function here. And what this function does is it creates, first of all, a dice image array by running a function called roll. And then it's displaying that dice image array. So let me explain. If we look at, first of all, our images, we have dice one, dice two, dice three, dice four, and so on. When we run create, uh, when we run roll, what we're going to do is, first of all, call the roll sound, right? Because don't forget, this is running when the button is clicked. So we're running roll. Roll plays the roll sound. It creates an array called rolls, and then it fills that array with the names of the images based on a random number. So we're going to loop through this five times from zero to num rolls, and num rolls, you remember, is five for the number of times we're rolling. Each time through, we're going to roll, and we're going to get a random number between zero and five. That's all this does. It creates a random number between zero and five, assigns it to roll. We'll then push onto the rolls array a string, image slash dice, the value from roll plus one. So this will give us a value between one and six, and then attach dash 150 times 150 gif. So what that's going to do is, if it rolls a one, it's going to attach that graphic, a two, that graphic, three, that graphic, four, that graphic. So we're essentially creating an array of these file names based on the random selection of a number between zero and five. And that gives us an array of the image names. So we have our array of image names in roles. So roles is the array of image names. And then we'll return roles to the caller. So if you'll remember, the caller is right here on line 51. And dice image array now holds that array of image file names. We're going to pass that array of image file names to display dice. That's going to take that array of file names and it's going to create output. And essentially what it's going to do is it's going to go through each member of the array and put it inside an image tag. And then it's going to create output with all of the image tags. So if we roll, for example, here, a one, a five, a five, a three, and a three, it's loading image dice one, 150, 150, dice five, 150, 150, dice five, 150, 150, and then dice three, two times. It's put, that's in the array, and then it's getting them out of the array here and into image tags to actually display them. You can see here image, source, and then what's inserted there is the actual file name. Now to do this, you've got to make sure that you have a file naming convention that makes some sense, which is exactly why we named our die files dice one, dice two, etc. So this way we're able to dynamically create the file names and dynamically display them. And that's essentially how the app works. Once we've gotten our file names inside of a series of image tags, then we're going to display this in the div dice, taking the inner HTML and switching it to out. And it's going to remain in that state until we click roll again, in which case we'll roll the sound, we'll create a blank array. Using random numbers, we'll create five file names out of this set of file names. We'll pass that to 
our display dice function, which will take the array, loop through it, and make image tags. It's going to wrap each file name in image tags and then display it. The only thing I haven't talked about is the roll sound which plays, and that's as simple as getting the element, the audio element, from the uh, HTML and running the play function on it because it's an audio element, you can run play. I've also, because we're testing, we were testing on the desktop first, have a manual call to initialize the app because the device ready function obviously doesn't run on the desktop. So pretty cool. So we've got a simple app using Cordova that's running within the iOS environment using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Pretty cool if I do say so myself. Thanks for watching. I'm Mark Lassoff. Don't forget, if you enjoyed this video, to go ahead and hit that like button, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you next time.